The psalmist prays, Lord, make us know the shortness of our life that we may gain wisdom of heart. Now we say life is short, and that's true. That's a biblical consideration. It's a biblical reality. Life is short. And people who understand that life is short and that eternity is forever, they have wisdom of heart. It's called having an eternal perspective. And again, people with an eternal perspective, people for whom every decision they make takes into consideration eternity and the, the, and the, the well-being of their soul, these people have wisdom of heart. And the Lord wants us to have wisdom of heart. He wants us to have an eternal perspective. In the same psalm, we're reminded that a thousand years, Lord, in your eyes are like a day. And again, this is, this is something we, we kind of get. You know, time goes by mysteriously quickly in some ways. Sometimes it seems to drag on forever. But think about, like, how old are you? Hasn't those years, haven't those years gone by quite quickly? A thousand years are like a day in God's eyes. And the Lord wants us to, to understand this. In the same psalm, it goes on, it gives us an image. Our life is like the grass that springs up in the morning and by evening it withers. Now, when I studied scripture in the seminary, we were told that in the Holy Land, in the desert regions, where it hardly ever rains, the wind carries all these seeds from different plants and flowers and grasses all over the desert. The desert is covered with seeds. And when they get the rare rain, they get rain on the desert ground. There's, there's some, you know, different plants, but there's, there's grass that it just springs up. And by the end of the day, it's gone. It withers. It's like the lifespan of this grass is one day. And, and Scripture's telling us our life, it's kind of like that too, this life on earth. Now, Ecclesiastes, we're all familiar. We love this passage. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. You're all familiar with that. Some people who aren't even familiar with Scripture, they're, they're aware of this saying and also have a sense of the truth of, the, of this saying. And it's good for us to recognize the things that is just vanity, you know. I remember when I was a teenager, our dad bought us a four-wheel drive pickup truck. It was a beautiful truck. Oh, it was so nice. But it had chrome, chrome wheels, chrome rims. And I would shine those chrome rims so that they were so, you know, beautiful, shiny. And I'm embarrassed to say I'd even kind of armor all the tires now, I remember when I was doing this, even in my, the foolishness of my youth, I had enough wisdom to think, this is a little silly. Like I'm trying to make my tires look, you know, bright and shiny. Talk about vanity of vanities. Who cares about how your tires look, you know? Now, I'm not judging people who put armor all on their tires. I mean, fine, it was no big deal, you gotta do something. But anyways, the point is, is it's so important for us to recognize so much of what we, what we do in life, we're building a sandcastle would, again, nothing wrong with building a sandcastle. It's fun to build sandcastles, but a sandcastle, eventually the waves are going to come and there's going to be no trace of it. Vanity of vanities. And Scripture is telling us, don't put your heart in things that are, have no value, no lasting value. Vanity of vanities. Okay, then Colossians chapter 3, Paul tells us, Set your mind, this is again the second reading today, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. You see, as children of God, we have within us a sense of the transcendent. You know, we have a sense of, of, of things that are eternal, the things that really matter. And so we should, again, a child of God should find himself Wanting to go to church on Sunday, wanting to take a retreat occasionally, wanting to commune with God throughout the day. Do you find yourself sometimes praising the Lord throughout the day? If you are, you're setting your mind on things that are above, trying to, you know, continue to work at uprooting vice in your life and, and, and cultivating virtue. Again, these are, these are the things of a spiritual person who knows that, that he needs to, to care for his soul. And the thing is, it's, it's a tragedy. 
there are so many people, especially in our secular world, and maybe some of us, some of us, we were like that at one time in our life too. All we're doing is running after the things of the world. It's all we think about. That's all we care about. That's all we value. We have friends that think we're absolutely nuts going to church every Sunday. What's the point of that? You know, they think our daily prayer time is a waste of time. These people don't have a clue who they are and whose they are. They don't know their identity, their dignity, their authority, and their destiny. We're supposed to set our mind on things that are above, not on things that are of the earth. Now, it goes on to say in Colossians, Paul says, you have stripped off the old self with the, its practices and have clothed yourself, yourself with the new self. And it's so important for us, you know, I think other translations say, you know, you've, you've stripped yourself of the old, <laughs> you've stripped yourself of the old man, and you've put on the new man. And again, as children of God, we need to recognize, like, I'm a new creation in Christ. Thanks to the blood of Jesus, I've been washed clean, made new, and filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm a child of God, I'm filled with His, with his presence and with His life. I'm a new man, I'm a new creation. The old man, I'm done with him. And the thing is, again, this expression, it's common because people will talk about, you know, the, the, the new man sometimes tries to reassert, reassert or the, rather, the old man sometimes tries to reassert himself, you know. You start to get, you know, maybe angry ab about things or you start to, you know, get worldly and vain about things and you realize, oh, that's the old man. The old man is trying to come back, you know, and you, you, you have to remind yourself, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm done with the old man. It's the new man, the new creation that is so important. We're walking on the new way, following the Lord Jesus. And then finally, in the, in the uh, gospel today, we have this, this uh, parable, a uh, powerful parable, very interesting. You know, I think we might be catching some of the Lord's humor here because he talks about this rich man who decides he's going to tear down his barns and build <clears throat> bigger ones. And then he says, I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, part of the humor in this is your soul couldn't care less about having barns and riches. Your soul doesn't care about those things. Your soul cares about things of the Spirit. You know, Scripture says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless His holy name. Your soul wants to praise the Lord. Your soul wants divine life. Your soul wants the presence of God, the peace of God, the love of God. That's what your soul wants. Your soul couldn't care less about barns filled with stuff. Your soul is set on the fatherland, heaven. And so again, there's a bit of, you know, humor in this, the, this rich person saying, you know, uh, soul, you know, you have ample goods. Now, it goes on, and again, this is a biblical image. Uh, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life is being demanded of you. And this is a, this is kind of an image, a consideration that's common. You know, you'll hear preachers say, you know, if you were to die tonight, would you be ready? Well, that question and consideration, that comes straight from here. That's why we don't typically say if you were to die tomorrow or to die next week. No, tonight. You know, this person has all these plans, all these visions, thinks he has many more years. He doesn't realize that tonight he's going to be called home, you know. And this consideration is something we can ask ourselves too, maybe every day. That's why a lot of us, we do an examination of conscience before we go to bed, just in case I die overnight, which they say is one of the best ways to die. Can you imagine, you know, especially if you're in a state of grace. But the point is, is, you know, uh, this, this consideration. If you were to die tonight, would you be ready? Have you really been seeking first the kingdom of God? Have you been valuing and putting first the things that are most important? Or have you been a worldly person running after the most pointless things, building sandcastles that are, you know, just, just going to disappear? So the point is we need to have an eternal perspective. When we have an eternal perspective, they say people with an eternal perspective, they enjoy life way more. Because they're not afraid of all kinds of, you know, things that, that, you know, people who only see this life. An eternal perspective gives us a fire, gives us a joy, even a thrill 
We enjoy the gift of this wonderful life as much as we can. God wants to have life in abundance, but our heart is ultimately in heaven where we will be with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen.